All right, Norma, let me know when you're recording. Okay, just for the record, this meeting will be recorded and we're all set, Mayor. All right. It is now 636. Uh, this is uh, a duly called regular council meeting of the town of Anthony, Texas, posted in accordance with section 551.002 and 551.041 of the Open Meetings Act of the Texas Government Code. Public participation during the portion of the agenda for public comment is limited to that portion only, except that if the citizen's comments relate to a topic or subject covered under an agenda item, the citizen shall wait to speak until the agenda item comes up for discussion. At all other times during the council meeting, the audience shall not enter into discussion or debate on matters being considered by the presiding officer. Uh, Ms. Castillo, can we go ahead and get a quorum check, please? Yes, sir. Councilman Garcia? You are mute. I'm here. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Councilman Chavez? Here. Councilman Alfaro? Here. Mayor Pro Tem Weeks? Here. Thank you. And Councilwoman Flores. Ms. Flores? Oh, you are mute, ma'am. Okay, here. Thank you. We have a quorum, sir. Okay. Moving on to item four, open forum for the public limited to two minutes. Ms. Castillo, uh, have we had anybody request or uh, reach out to you in regards to speaking in open forum? No, sir, I did not get notification that they would like to speak on the uh, open forum. Okay, sounds good. Moving on to item Five, review and action on minutes of regular town council meeting of January 25th, 2021. Uh, any questions, comments, a motion on the table if no discussion is to be had. So move to approve. Okay, I got a motion made by Councilman Garcia. Do I have a second? Second. Second. Seconded by Councilman Chavez. All in favor? Aye. Oh, Aye. 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 All right, any opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Moving on to the next item. No, uh, item six, review and action on minutes of regular town council meeting of December 14, 2021. Any questions, comments? If not, do I have a motion on the table? So moved. I have a motion made by Councilman Garcia. Do I have a second? Second. All right, seconded by Ms. Soledad Flores. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any Aye. opposed? All righty, motion carries. All right, five to zero. All right. <clears throat> Moving on to item seven, discussion, consideration, and action on the following new business. Item one, discussion, consideration, and action on Texas CDBG uh, number 7219009, Popular Street, Poplar Street Improvement Project and Waterline Replacement Project Final Construction Drawings, presented by Mr. Gilbert Andujo from AOCOM, AOCOM Engineering. Gilbert? Floor is all yours, sir. Yes, uh, good evening, Mayor and Council members. Uh, Gilbert Andujo with AECOM. Uh, here I bring to you today are the uh, final set of drawings for the uh, Texas CDBG number 7219009 uh, street improvements. Uh, these particular improvements are from on Poplar Street from, from 6th Street down to Magdalena Street. And uh, within those improvements, we are looking to do a full reconstruction of the street, uh, which is gonna entail uh, removal and replacement of all existing curb and gutter, uh, removal and replacement of all existing driveways, and uh, coming in with new sidewalk where it is necessary within, uh, within the areas that are lacking sidewalk, 
as well as new ADA ramps within the project. Now, based on that, this is the next phase that we are doing. It's uh, it's a continuation. This is, and as far as that, on our previous project that we did, we had done the improvements from on Poplar Street from Kelwood Street all the way to uh, to Sixth Street at the time. And during that project, we uh, we found out that uh, the water line was old. It was an old asbestos line. And uh, we replaced it in that previous project. And as part of, uh, not part of this project, but we do have a separate set of drawings that we have generated as well to address the replacement of the eight inch and portion of the six inch water line that are within the same stretches on this street. So with that being said, those you all should have a packet of that, uh, of the street project and the water line project itself, unless you have that as a separate, uh, as a separate item, I don't recall. I don't have the agenda in front of me. I apologize. And as you guys know, uh, Mr. Andujo, you know, with the issues that we saw with the time frame, you know, the letting out of the construction and moving forward with the entire project, it did take a little bit of time. We had the rains and everything, and we weren't anticipating the issues that we had with the water line. So taking a proactive approach, we know that water line is going to be in the same condition that the other one is. Um, we're going to go ahead and, you know, as we presented, take advantage and, you know, timeline wise, get started on that so we can go out for bid and everything to meet the same uh, time constraints as the uh, CDBG grant. Um, so we can go ahead and knock out the street and the, the water improvements uh, prior uh, to the actual road getting constructed itself. That way we don't have to tear anything out. We got all the connections, everything pretty much squared away. Uh, just like we did with this project and with the way we've been setting money aside with capital improvements um, we are going to have the necessary capital to move forward with that project and get everything fixed up and done up uh, correctly and you know sidewalks and everything all the way through correct mayor anything else that you'd like to add gilbert uh no nothing just that uh what you know, we did want to bid these projects together as one big project, but uh, in talking with the grant administrator today, um, if we did that, we would have to uh, we would have to submit a modification to the contract, which would in entail us going through a whole new environmental and and going through the whole process again. So, in the interest of that, and uh, and just getting these projects going. We'll go ahead and just bid out the project separately. Uh, I'd like to schedule uh, the same bid opening date for both, but we'll have a di different construction times for each one of the projects. We'll begin the waterline project, and as we're nearing, you know, somewhere halfway through there, we can start the street project to where they can follow along behind there and 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 get both projects done within the time frame that we have allotted for the CDBG. Sounds good to me, sir. So I can entertain any questions right now, Council, if, if you have any. Any questions from any of the council members for Mr. Andujo? Did, uh, Mr. did he give a time frame for the project? Uh, you know what? We have an ending time frame of October of October 31st. So basically our time frame is between now, February and October 31st. Uh, this particular project I'm entailing, it should take us four to five months to get done. So I'm envisioning having a bid opening, you know, middle of March to the end of March and uh, having our construction phase period between April and uh, September, October of this year. And just to know for when this happens. <clears throat> or oh, yes, sir. We'll, we'll, we'll notify everybody and uh, and we'll keep you abreast of the uh, of the schedule that we have for that. How how will it affect the the people? Will it be all the whole street taken out or one side at a time? Well, what we're going to want to do is is to do it in uh, is is pretty much close down the street and do it in sections and uh, allow access to the residents throughout the whole project and also as well as giving access to AMS as necessary. So we'll phase that out and uh, we'll work that out with the contractor once we get this contract going. And uh, we'll keep the Public Works Department involved uh, just to let them know of any road closures and uh, any side streets that we need to close. Okay, thank you. 
And this time also beforehand, uh, one of the things that we do want to do is give a little bit more uh, professional courtesy to some of the residents that are encroaching uh, on the right of way. So by doing it like this, we are going to give them a little bit more time to be able to make the necessary arrangements and meet the necessary uh, financial requirements in order to move back uh, whatever you know properties and fencing that they have that is encroaching uh, on our right of way as well. Uh, that's correct, Mayor. Appreciate that. Any other questions? I think Mr. Garcia had a question. Joe, uh, I had one, but uh, Sean asked that question that I wanted that I was concerned about. Thank you. All righty, appreciate that. Any other questions from any other council members? Do we have uh, a motion on the uh, street improvement projects and water line replacement project final construction drawings? Motion to approve. I'll second. I have a motion made by Councilman Chavez, seconded by Councilman Garcia to approve uh, the discussion consideration <coughs> action on Texas CDBG uh, grant number 7219009 or 9009, uh, Popular Street Improvement Projects and Waterline Replacement Project Final Construction Drawings. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. All right, motion carries unanimously. Five to zero. Thank you, Councilman, for approving and moving forward with uh, the drawings for this uh, project. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Gilbert. you, Mayor, and thank you, Council members. And uh, with that, I'll go ahead and drop off the call unless y'all would like me to stick around. <laughs> You're fine with that, Gilbert. Thank you very much, sir. All righty, guys. Y'all have a good evening. Thank you. you too, sir. Thank you. Good evening. Bye. All right. Continuing with uh, the new business uh, item two. Discussion, consideration, and action on approval of Stone Garden Fiscal Year 2020 Resolution Number 2021-43-0208, presented by Chief Enriquez. Chief? Mayor, Council, uh, as you know, standard verbiage for the resolutions. This is allowing us permission from you all to apply for Stone Garden. As you know, Stone Garden allows us, gives us a supplemental overtime to do enhanced patrol. Um, targeted towards uh, narcotic and human uh, human smuggling. So we're just asking for your permission to for us to be able to apply for this funding source again for a year. Uh, I think it's fiscal year 20. They go by different fiscal years. Chief, how, mu how much is the grant for? Um, if I'm not mistaken, I think uh, Ms. Goggin wrote it for about 90000 give or take. And that, that's all going for overtime pay and, uh, and that good stuff? Correct. It's going for overtime pay for um, drug test kits, more machine to be able to, to test the narcotics. Okay. Chief, how, how much did we get reimbursed last year? I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Eddie. That's all right. Um, go ahead, Mr. Chavez. How many of those drug test uh, kits do you guys get out of that stone garden? Well, the the kits themselves, we can we purchase about um, mm, at about 20, 20 kits maybe. But with this grant, we're purchasing the machine itself. Oh, that, okay, perfect. Yeah, okay. that's that's uh, that's gonna test those drugs. Mayor, if I'm not mistaken, with reimbursement last year was one hundred and twenty-two thousand. Sounds good, Chief. Do I have any other questions from the council? Anybody? Do we have a motion uh, for item two? I have a motion to approve. Motion to approve. All right. I have a motion made by Councilman Chavez, seconded by Councilman Alfaro, to approve uh, Stone Garden Fiscal Year 2020 Resolution Number 2021-43-028. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries unanimously, five to zero. Thank you, Chief. Thank you, Mayor and Council. That was about 90,000. Okay, moving on to item three. Uh, discussion, consideration, and action on order of election for municipalities presented by our town, uh, town clerk, Ms. Norma Castillo. 
Yes, sir. As you all found in your package, this is just going to be a, a copy of the sample order for the elections held May the 1st, 2021. It's going to be for place for mayor, alderman place number one and alderman place number two. And this is just a formality and I would need all council members to stop by the office and sign this document to approve that um, that order. So we want to go ahead and uh, make a motion to approve the order. Do you know what the order is? And could you just re-verify the uh, place and numbers, please? The order will be for place mayor, alderman place one, and alderman place two. Okay. Moved Do I have a motion on the table? I got a motion made by Mr. Weeks. Do I have a second? Second. Uh, second. All right. Seconded by Ms. Councilwoman Soledad Flores. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, motion carries five to zero. Thank you, council. Thank you. Moving on to item four, uh, discussion on a resolution uh, number 2020-35-1012, uh, adopting a water leak credit adjustment policy for the water department. Um, I, uh, I had reached out to our mayor pro tem, Mr. Weeks, um, What's been kind of coming up, ladies and gentlemen, because we've adopted and made changes to uh, the water rates, um, our cutoffs, our, uh, basically the overall policy uh, for adjustments on the water leaks. As everybody knows, they're only allowed one. Uh, Ms. Norma, if you would uh, confirm, I think it's one, one leak to be adjusted per year. Uh, Correct. That has specific verbiage in regards to being not reasonably, reasonably detected. Um, and it's once for every two years, correct? Yes, sir. Now, one of the things that, you know, uh, has been coming up is, you know, because we don't have a way of metering what goes into the sewer, we do have some residents that still ultimately do not, um, would not qualify for the adjustment because they've had more than one leak. Um, but one of the questions that we've had is, you know, even if they accept the, uh, they are accepting the accountability and responsibility of the leak. Um, but one of the things they were asking, uh, considering the way the sewer gets factored on the average, is is the town or is there a, 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 a willingness or an opportunity to be able to establish a policy where we can only look at adjusting the sewer on those types of situations since technically you know if it was either a water leak in the yard something like that ideally it was something that necessarily didn't make it down into uh, you know down the sewer i wanted to kind of see what you know open this up for discussion to see what your thoughts are on establishing you know some type of policy like that you know if there's something that we'd be able to do or to kind of just leave it as is that way you know i can get back to some of these residents and business owners that have been dealing with this situation um, you know, at least some direction and, and what the council is going to decide to do or come up with regarding this, this uh, certain issue. And I'll leave the floor open to council if anybody has any comments or, or would like to add to the discussion. Mayor, um, if you don't mind me uh, <clears throat> bringing to the um, council's attention and to, and, and to your attention, Mayor, and you, you're obviously probably well aware of it, but the last paragraph of the adjustment policy does address uh, an adjust, an appropriate credit adjustment to the sewer cost. Um, so the, it does provide an avenue for such an adjustment. So I'm not I'm not sure whether you. Um, what well, we're asking is it, 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 it's providing the adjustment to the sewer when they're qualifying for the adjustment. Uh, period. But if they were to have more than one league, you know, once a year, two, three times a year, depending on whatever the case may be, you know, just for transparency purposes to see if we either had, you know, a policy in place that would allow, you know, the administration, the authority to make a necessary adjustment just on the sewer without having to adjust the, 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 the water bill because of the fact that maybe they don't they don't qualify anymore for the adjustment on the whole bill but if there's a way of those individuals are being charged for the water loss 
if there's any way that there can be an adjustment made to the sewer since at those times it's technically not going down the sewer um and that's kind of what we wanted to see if maybe we can get some clarification some direction on to see if it's something that the town council would consider uh, because it would be something that would help minimize some of the issues that we are having administratively uh, when it comes to those individuals that, you know, uh, have had an additional leak uh, throughout the year and no longer qualify for that adjustment on the whole bill. We want to see if there was any opportunity to just adjust only the sewer if, in fact, it still meets the criteria of the policy, you know, not being reasonably detected um, and things of that nature. Okay. Got it, Mayor. Thank you. My apologies for not following you on that. No, 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 that's fine. Uh, Mr. Chavez. Okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, I got a question real quick. The um, how are how are they determining if it's a leak on the in the yard or inside the or inside the house? Okay, because I mean if. For instance, if you get a water leak in the uh, in the air conditioner, it's not going through the drain. That it's is not a going good question, Mr. Sewer. Chavez. Um, the policy overall, the way it states, is even to apply for the adjustment, it has to be done by a licensed plumber. Um, plumber. And most of the time, they do determine, you know, where the leak was. They can identify where the leak right. was at um, and the nature of what might have caused it. Now, if it's someone ideally forgetting to leave their sprinkler on, I mean, that uh, unfortunately that's, that would not qualify under the adjustment because it has to not be reasonably detected. But for right, some of these right, individuals right. that might, you know, if the instance is some of these old houses, if they have a, a, a water pipe or something that busts, um, they get the adjustment for that one time. But okay. the second time, if it happens, you know, according to policy, they don't get the, they're not, they don't qualify or are able to apply for the adjustment. Um, so they are, in fact, you know, on the hook for the entire water loss. And, and, and it's still treated water from the town. Um, but one of the things we wanted to see is even if those cases do come up and they don't qualify for the adjustment over the whole bill, if the town council would consider at least allowing an adjustment for the sewer, that way, you know, for example, if the average, if they're averaging out, you know, their sewer rates and stuff for the year, um, a water leak or something like that would not negatively impact them on the overall rate. Hmm. Well, I think that would be reasonable enough to assume that when the plumber shows up, if he's a professional, he would definitely notice any other issues with the house, right? So that once a year deal, uh, that actually once every couple of years, would actually resolve the overall issue in the home if the plumber is yeah, a but, professional and knows what he's uh, doing. Yeah, but a lot of times uh, people don't get uh, licensed plumbers. Well, there's and unfortunately for, for the way our policy states is in order for EE, let's say, for example, they had a water leak. A plumber said they had something that was un unreasonably detected. They were able to get that adjustment, you know, in May. And let's say, for example, in the summer, you know, they had another leak. Unfortunately, according to our policy, you know, they're not going to be able to qualify for an adjustment over the whole bill. Uh, so they're going to be mm -hmm. on the hook for the water. But at this point. Um, the sewer. It would, uh, it would see. If it would be reasonable to say, you know what, you're still on the hook for the water because I mean it is lost water, right? Uh, but right. what we could say to at least you know show you know our constituents that we are willing to look at some of the issues with this is we should look to ideally be able to adjust the sewer if in fact it was a leak mm -hmm. under and it didn't go down you know the sewage or the sewer um, and be able to at least adjust the sewer. Because a lot of times when we have had the opportunity, Norma, myself, when we have talked to some of these homeowners, these business owners, I mean, they know, you know, it is part of their responsibility to maintain, you know, their overall water infrastructure on their own properties. Um, you know, but sometimes depending on the amount of the league, you know, you could see anywhere from two to 300. We saw one that was almost three, four grand on a water leak. Um, and depending like on the businesses where it's getting factored into the sewer, I mean, they saw and received a high sewer cost because of that when it necessarily didn't, you know, go back into our wastewater treatment plant. So we were looking at seeing, hey, you know what, they fit and fall under the same criteria as the policy, but administratively, we have the, the administrative authority to go ahead and say, hey, you know what, let's adjust the sewer rate at least. They're still on the hook for the water. But because it necessarily didn't go down the sewer, 
let's go ahead and see about, you know, at least making the, the appropriate adjustment to the overall sewer charge on the water bill. But it would still have to follow under all the criteria, everything, you know, unreasonably detected, um, and things of that nature. And like I said, this, this is why it was just up for discussion. I want to see what you guys think. You know, we can build something that works or establish a policy that, that can make sense. But I'll go ahead and turn it over to Mr. Weeks. He has his hand raised. Yeah. Hi, everyone. Um, so, yeah, ben, Ben's just trying to do some CYA here and get some official uh, backing. Um, you know, uh, just kind of on the water subject, you know, some of the people have been moving out this winter and they're getting their meters read now because we we had that policy to read meters. Well, guess what? Their their sewers higher than their their actual rates are higher than their winter rates because you know more people are staying at home, COVID, working at home, the kids are home. They're using a lot more water, so the water, uh, you know, with with the fact that we it's increased and then it's being used more. Um, so ben was just trying to, you know, I, I can't remember what your example was, Ben, but you had somebody that had some kind of leak in the house, and then a few months later they had leak, uh, a busted irrigation. And and we know the irrigation stuff didn't go down the drain, but we just don't have a policy in place to. Yeah. To and, and that's one of the things, you know, like we I had always mentioned, you know, what we do for one, it's, you know, all the way across the board. And that's one of the things that I've explained to a lot of the residents. I've explained to a lot of business owners, you know, previous administrations, individuals used to come up and say, hey, you know what? I had a leak coming some slack on the water and, you know, we'd see adjustments to bills and things like that that necessarily may not have gone all the way across the board to everybody. And, you know, for the sake of transparency, you know, honesty and keeping, you know, everybody on the same kind of level playing field and giving everybody that same opportunity. Um, that's why I was kind of wanting to come to you guys to see, you know, if administratively we can establish a policy that would give myself or Norma, you know, ultimately it comes down to Norma as well, uh, since she is the main person here at town as a town clerk, uh, to go ahead and look at the documentation, the paperwork, and make the call to say, you know what, you already had one adjustment for one year, but you did have another leak, you're still, you know, going to be able and responsible for the entire bill of the water, but we will adjust your sewer accordingly, that way they're not charged double for something that necessarily didn't make it down the drain. And also minimize, you know, the potential for residents or anybody to come and try and point fingers and say, oh, well, so and so is getting special consideration, this and that, you know, I just kind of wanted to make sure that we're fair across the board and that, you know, instead of somebody saying, oh, well, these people are just in my water bill, I want to make sure that we have a policy backing it and putting it in place that covers us to say that, hey, you know what, this is the policy that, you know, it, it, you can, it, it can apply to you. It's something that we did that can be applied across the board out of fairness. That way, like I said, for transparency purposes, we are able to move forward and make these necessary adjustments with council's blessing and also the necessary documentation uh, and policy and paperwork in place that gives us that, that right to do so. Mr. Hawkins, did you have your hand raised? <laughs> Eddie, Mr. Chavez. Again, <laughs> okay. What well, the reason I asked that question is because I received well, not only I, several other uh, homeowners here in, in Anthony received these letters for a warranty. It's a service line warranty, and they're asking me if we're the ones that sent it out. And I'm telling them no, that I'm not sure, but uh, I don't know if you guys received one. Whoever's homeowners here in Anthony, because uh, they're going out and they've been mailed out to us. Eddie, and that's. I'm sorry, uh, Eddie. That's the no, deal that we. But, that's the deal that we brought to the table um, after the last TML, and um, we approved last okay. year, where we're we're um, supporting them, but it's not our program, and it's a way it's not to. Ours. Okay. Um, it's a way to get the warranty to people so that they have. Um, another something to fall back on yeah something to fall back on in case maybe they have an old okay. leaky you know old house with old pipes or whatever so they have our support but it's not tied with the city or town yeah, and remember right. when, when we brought that up they had 
you know, we had mm -hmm. a lot of issues back and forth because they wanted to include the town logo. They wanted to do all this and that. And we told them, no, right. we don't want residents thinking that they're associated with us. Um, and we did have some residents reach out. And I told them they had our blessing because a lot of the time we are responsible for the, the, the main line and everything that goes up to the meter going from the right. sidewalk. But everything after that, once it goes into the property, that's the responsibility of the homeowner. And we just wanted, right. you know, and supported um, raising awareness and the potential for them if they were looking at getting some additional insurance coverage that could cover those types of scenarios, um, the ability to right. do so. But we, we did strictly make sure that, you know, not to use town logos. And even though they did say something with the town of Anthony on it, which, you know, we did reach out to them and ultimately said that's not what we approved for them to move forward with. Um, you right. know, for the most part, you know, it, it is something separate and not associated with the town. Okay. Just like I just wanted to clarify that. Going around for the water softener, trying to tell people to test their arsenic and this and that, and they're saying they're from yeah. the town of Anthony and they're not associated with us whatsoever. Right. Yeah, I just wanted to clarify that because we yes, are, I was getting called on them, so. Okay. So what are you guys' thoughts? Um, um, is this something that, you know, you would support and, you know, have me, Henry, and, and Norma knock out and put a policy that would grant us the ability administratively to move forward with making an adjustment on the sewer? Or ultimately, I would what, what are your thoughts, Mr. Garcia? I make a motion to approve. Okay. Well. Uh, did you want to hold on that, Eddie, and uh, see what Mr. Yes. Garcia had to say? Mr. Garcia. Yes. Yeah, that's fine. I think this policy is we should have had it a long time ago, and I think by bringing it forward now, I think it's the right thing to do, and I'll I'll support it, and I'll second it, Mr. Chavez. All right, so I got Mr. Chavez making the motion uh, to move forward with establishing a uh, water leak credit adjustment policy for the water department on the sewers, um, seconded by Councilman Garcia. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Motion carries five yeah, ben, to zero. Ben, I just wonder, is there any way that we can let the town of Anthony people know, you know, what we just discussed? Because uh, it does save, you know, people of the town of Anthony and everybody just immediately assumes that it's the, the you know, the city of Anthony. Uh, yes, Ms. Soledad, I appreciate uh, the information on that. You know, unfortunately, um, we'll give as much notice and heads up as we can. You know, we do live stream stuff. We do post it here in town hall on the on, on the uh, message boards here when people come and pay their bills. Um, and we also do put the information on the water bills. Um, but sometimes, you know, it's just a matter of, you know, people getting the information and reaching out to us either personally or to the office and the girls in the office and everybody pretty much, you know, have everything, you know, put in place to go ahead and take the time to explain these to a lot of the residents. Um, but then again, sometimes there's just some that don't bother even calling or asking, you know, they just toss the paper. <laughs> so we rather, you know, make sure that we're taking the time and focusing on the ones that are inquiring and, and, and asking about it and educating them and, and, and uh, sharing the knowledge that we have in regards to that policy and the way it got put together. Um, but at this point, you know, I think we have a lot of other issues that we're needing to address and looking at um, that we didn't want to waste any other or not waste, but any take up any another unnecessary time for our girls and our water guys uh, in passing out notices like that. Because as you guys know, El Paso did move forward with getting back to their normal uh, uh protocols for shutoffs, late fees and, uh, and stuff. So I did talk to Norma and we are going to move forward uh, for March and we are going to pass out and hand out notices to the residents, letting them know and notifying them uh, door to door with flyers uh, in English and Spanish that we are returning to normal, uh, you know, late fees and disconnect protocols for our water for the month of uh, starting of March now. Thank and, you. And that was a great question, Mrs. Suarez. Uh, what I would tell you, it's kind of rude what I did <laughs> because two people reached out to me, but I just asked them if they read it and they didn't. So they get something that says Town of Anthony, they just start freaking out. And But if you read it, it may actually put in some effort to understand it. 
um, because a lot of times we're educating people that don't want to be educated because they're already mad because they don't under they, they don't take the time to read it so sorry okay any other questions or comments on this uh i do want to thank council for supporting moving forward with the motion and establishing this policy i think uh it is going to be beneficial and it's going to kind of take a little bit of a headache with some of the residents and, and complaints that they had uh, in regards to this. And like I said, it's not something that happens every day, but, you know, at least establishing fairness and a policy that can be evenly applied to everybody, uh, I think, is, is, is a good uh, step forward. And I appreciate you guys' support in this. Mayor, we, we, we could do it one of two ways. Do an amendment to that resolution and add the language that you want and then bring back a, a resolution amending that. Um, or you can just pass a resolution similar to that one with the new language and basically, you know, setting everything in, in, in that resolution. But we can do it either as an amendment or as a new resolution. Uh, do you want to do it as an amendment, Henry? Maybe uh, easier time-wise? Yeah, <laughs> either way, it will be the same, Mayor. It's, it's, in terms of work, it's the same, you know. So, But I was just saying either we could do it one of those two ways. It sounds like an amendment probably would be the best course. So yeah, let's do an amendment. Sounds then, good to me, sir. Of course, we'll bring it back for the council to look at it, consider it, and, and vote on it. Yes, sir. All right, thank you guys. Uh, moving on to item eight. Uh, this is our executive session. So we will be cutting off the live stream uh, in a moment and we will return shortly after we reconvene. Uh, but the city council will now go into uh, a closed executive session at 7.13 p.m. Uh, pursuant to Section 551.074 personnel matters of the Texas Government Code to deliberate the appointment, employment, evaluation, reassignment, duties, discipline, or charge against an officer or employee. The open meeting will be reconvened following the closed session, at which time, action, if any, uh, will be considered. And like I said, it's now 7.13, so we'll go ahead and cut the live feed and move into uh, executive session. Ms. Gon Ms. Castillo, please. Okay, sir, so just for the record, the meeting will be starting to record. All right, we are back from executive session at 9.18 p.m. Um, one second, all right. Item nine, we are reconvening into open session and we will take action if necessary at 9.18 p.m and let the record reflect that no action was taken uh, during executive session. Moving on to item one, discussion, consideration, and action on disciplinary action of Officer Albert De La Cruz. Is there a motion on the table? A motion to um, to terminate in with the um, proof that we have about his uh, disciplinary actions. Yeah, so I motion to terminate. 
I have a motion to terminate made by Councilman Chavez. Is I'll there second. a second? Seconded by Councilman Jose Garcia. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion to terminate passes uh, five to zero. All right. Moving on to item two. Discussion, consideration, and action on hiring an officer for the Anthony, Texas Police Department. Do we have a motion, motion to on approve. that? A motion to approve. Okay. I have I, a motion I made by Councilman Chavez, seconded by Councilman Alfaro, to move uh, to approve hiring an officer for the Anthony, Texas Police Department, uh, recommended by Chief Enriquez. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Motion carries unanimously, five to zero. Moving on to item nine, departmental reports for streets. As you guys know, we went ahead and already discussed um, the Poplar Street project from six to Magdalena. Um, everything is moving forward. Thank you all for uh, approving the overall plans um, for the project. Uh, moving on, everything for FM 1905, which is Franklin to Antonio from Donovan up to uh, Wildcat, uh, is basically still continuing to move forward. We did get reached out uh, by the local text office, and they are uh, looking to send us some documentation and paperwork because the landscape project that was done by them for the pine trees, uh, they are going to have to remove that and take them out. So they are willing to move forward and donate the trees to the town of Anthony, which I've had the opportunity to talk to uh, Ebert, um, which is our department head for public works. And we are looking at relocating those trees to the park and some of the Palo Verdes um, and the Mesquite to Wildcat. And we will be uh, putting forward some documentation to present to council probably by the next meeting. Um, in regards to accepting uh, the landscape, uh, since it is since it was done um, from federal funds funding, uh, we do have some certain criteria that needs to be met before we uh, are allowed to take those trees. But since it is the springtime, um, it is the perfect time to uproot them and, and transplant them. That way, we have uh, minimized any damage to the trees and they're able to uh, uh, catch and grow. Um, in regards to streets, I did get the recommendation from Mr. Weeks and have seen that pothole that is getting larger uh, at the entrance to the Heights. I think it's off of uh, Torres Altos, right? Um, we will be having Everett, the guys next time they go around doing the uh, pothole fixtures, uh, that they're gonna be filling that one. And then uh, other than that, I mean, at this moment in time, that's all I have. Uh, we did get El Paso Electric finally uh, to come out and restart connecting the uh, the street lights and the, the neighborhood residential lights that have been out that are located by the uh, park area. Um, those are worked on and they should be on tonight, no Ebert? Or they still got some work to do? They still got some work, work, uh, work to do, sir. And uh, I need to go check to see which ones they got out. And uh, I, want, I need to see if they got some around the Triangle Park. I know they were working on the one on the corner of uh, Antonio and Margarita, sir. Okay. Okay. And, uh, Sounds good. Yes. And you, if, if I may, sir, we are doing hot mix tomorrow. So if anybody got any bottles or anything, let me know. I got seven tons coming in the morning. We're that gonna be one doing... coming into the uh, Heights by Bariloche right on the entrance turning. Okay. There's a huge one. So if you can just check and go over that so area can... once, please. Yes, sir. We sure will. All right. Moving on to Parks and Recreation. Mr. Hawkins. Just on the parks, sir, but you, I mean, you pretty much said it uh, on the lights. We are working on the parks, and uh, as we met, uh, almost a Friday, sir, last week, we're going to be starting on the Wildcat. Once we get uh, a payment, sir, we're going to start starting on the parking lot and start drawing as, as we have on the map, on the drawings, okay? Yes, sir. And as you guys know, yeah, we are moving forward with getting the uh, Wildcat Park project started. 
So that'll be happening, you know, this uh, coming up shortly. These guys, we're going to phase it out, right? And I think our main concern is getting the parking lot done. And I think if um, we're going to move forward with the Poplar Street project, uh, once the pavers come out, they could, you know, now that they're mobilized and in the area, we could probably look to do that parking lot with asphalt. That way it's done correctly. Uh, while they're out here and get a, a little bit better deal on the overall um, asphalt since, you know, we don't have to pay mobilization fees and whatnot. Um, and then also see if we can continue to get the the price, uh, the, the discounted price that we get for the asphalt since they're out here for the project, just like we did to the entrance to Richard White um, and some of the further stretch that we did up on Poplar going up towards uh, past Kelwood. Um, so we'll do that. And then... Um, that's all I got. One of the things that I do want to let you guys know is the county is and the city of El Paso are going to move forward with allowing um, some of the youth practices to take place again. Um, there is going to be some strict criteria that needs to be followed. So as soon as I get that uh, documentation and the, the uh, recommendations from the county uh, and the health department put together, we will start allowing, you know, our baseball fields and stuff to be utilized by the youth groups. Um, so they can go out to practice um, and things of that nature uh, coming up real soon. So I'll keep you guys posted on that and I'll coordinate with Ebert um, to make sure that we have the proper signage uh, posted. And then also once we start do allowing the practices to take place, um, we'll coordinate with Chief and the, and the Police Department to make sure, you know, we focus on enforcement and education and we go out there with the individuals because I think they're going to have to have sheets for temp taking uh, hand sanitizer and all those and if uh, you know we go out there and they don't have none uh, we'll issue warnings and uh, have them leave the fields um, but once they start showing up with the proper uh, PPE equipment and you know hand sanitizers and stuff everybody gets educated on it uh, I think we'll, we won't see that many issues uh, once we get that going again um, anything else for parks and recs from anybody all right sure. moving on to police and fire chief we have an operation coming up. Um, is it tomorrow or the day after, Lieutenant? It's on Wednesday. It's on Wednesday. We have a highway interdiction uh, event coming up. Uh, we're joining forces with El Paso PD, El Paso SO, El Paso DPS. Um, so we'll be out there. Uh, all the funding is being provided by Operation Border Star. Um, we'll, like I said, we'll be aggressively out there. Officers are still diligently out there working. We've been increasing calls for service, especially during the evening times, but we're out there. LT, am I missing anything? We have like three minutes left, that's why. No, just to give a heads up, the operations are on I-10, so don't speak. Okay, well, we have we have our auction coming up the last Saturday of the month. Yes, sir. Yeah, sounds good, guys. We're gonna try and rush through this because we only got a little bit of time left, so I'm sorry. Uh, moving on to water and sewer, Mr. Hawkins. Uh, sir, was a uh, like I told you, uh, we had problems on the, on the on the sewer plant. We had one of the floats go out, and one of the pumps went out. And as a matter of fact, uh, also uh, we're going to be extending the line, sir, and for Lay Road for the new uh, building. Once I get the approval from um, from our Ron Roth, our inspector, sir, for the new uh, business that's coming in the, on Washington Street. That's the next project for the water and sewer. One of the things too, and I'm going to touch base because we had one of the. Uh, Mr. Edgar Ortiz from the Camarón Pelao again uh, was just wanting to bring up the fact that they're getting that smell from the town's plumbing back up the floor drains. Um, just, if you just, I know, I, I know we got a couple minutes left. Everett, if you just give them a, a, a reason, you know, to those things, because they're saying um, that we don't have uh, basically no breathers in the street, but that's more of an engineering thing. And you might be aware since they are at the end of the system there. Uh, but also letting them know that that place is frequent for the amount of grease that's being dropped yes, down sir. the sewer lines, and we're constantly getting that place plugged up and unplugged. And, and we do have vents, sir, on the main holes of a two little vents, sir. Escape. That's why they get the order. The only thing is, it's on the on the on the road, um, not on the road, but actually in the main street. We don't have the, the many businesses out there, so there's no flow. That's why we need to actually put some more water in it, sir. Okay. And you guys are always doing good about maintaining and trying to help out, you know, yes, that, that district with that. So if we can continue on that. That'll be great. Um, moving on to uh, court, Mr. Palomares. Cut. 
Irma, could you be kind enough to cover that item? And you probably have the report right there in front of you. Yes, sir, I do. So for the month of January, we collected 24585 with three cents. Um, for the warrants, we collected 3149 with 43 The next courts will be February the 10th, the 17th, and the 24th, sir. Okay. Thank you very much, Ms. Castillo. Moving on to finance. Uh, we were going to present our quarterly budget review today, uh, but we're some, uh, you know, Sean uh, with David and Norma, we're ironing out some of the, the numbers um, and we will present to next meeting because that is going to take a little bit of time and we don't want to uh, run out of time here. And in case the feed stuff, you know, cuts out, we just want the residents to know it's just because we ran out of time. Um, but moving on with the, the ad administration, um, I don't have anything to add at this moment in time. We still are going strong with the um, uh, food distribution on the Thursdays. Uh, Chief and the water guys, everybody's doing an outstanding job in trying to continue to provide food rations for the community. Uh, we want everybody to know that, you know, we are resuming our regular collection uh, and billing cycles um, and protocols for the month of March. So uh, disconnects, late fees and all that will start be, uh, being applied. So. Uh, we did help a lot of individuals with the CARES Act funding, those that were behind significantly on their water bills. So for the most part, those that took advantage of the, uh, the CARES Act opportunity, um, you know, most of their bills are up to par. But, you know, everybody is responsible for December, January, February and, and moving so forth. So you guys need to make the necessary arrangements with town uh, because next month we are going to start doing shutoffs. OK, um, other than that, that's all I have for administration. Elections will be taking place this May. Uh, those that are interested in, you know, trying to run for office are more than welcome to, um, you know, apply. All the necessary information can be found on the state website. Norma, if you can uh, add that real quick. Yes, sir. It will be at the Secretary of the State or if now we have a link on our town website. Okay, for all the necessary election info. Um, good luck to everybody that is applying. Uh, you know, any current council members that still need to fin uh, fill out their information, don't forget to do so. Um, and other than that, you know, thank you all for 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 joining with us and, and staying through the, the, the long uh, executive session. Um, that's all I have to say. And our next regular council meeting is scheduled at 630 p.m. on Monday, February 22nd, 2021. Do I have a move to adjourn? Thank you. Do I have a second? Second. Second. Seconded by Councilman Chavez. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Our meeting is adjourned at 932. Thank you, everybody. And have a great night. Have a great